Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. A month ago, on a Friday on Cars on the Move Live, we met up with Joe Bercari with Ty Thompson, and we were at the Midwestern Car Carriers Facility in Kansas City. Now, that day, we learned more about Joe, about the company, the equipment, the drivers, clients, running lanes, the shop, and auto transport fleet business in general but we only scratched the surface. When you think of the sheer size of the auto transport industry, dozens of automakers, hundreds of fleets, thousands of drivers, and millions of cars, there's a lot of topics for us all to talk about. So please make a warm welcome for Joe Bercari, VP and GM at Midwestern Car Carriers in Kansas City, along with Rod Jenkins, Operations Manager, and Ed Vaughn, Co-Owner. Please join the live chat, ask your questions, share your thoughts, grow your business, because it's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Tuesday night and happy new year uh, first Tuesday in 2021 like you need to uh, be notified of that right here we are and this is auto transport Intel if this is your first time here listen I want you to feel welcome please do feel welcome and please do say hello into the live chat in a few minutes I'm gonna go into the live chat and we're gonna talk and say hello and I see some new faces and we're seeing more and more new faces all of the time. So please do feel welcome. Ask a question. We know there's a lot of questions out there. So this is your safe zone. This is where you can ask anything. And we're going to go into industry news at the quarter hour. Industry news is a uh, my favorite segment because we're going to jump around on different news topics. Front of the store, back of the store, national news, social media news. Uh, we've got auto transport tech, car shipping trends vehicle logistics news, etc. And we're going to do that, and it's going to lead us into, we're going to bring Ty on the show. Because like I said, I got to meet Midwestern car carriers through Ty, so I want Ty to help me introduce Joe Bercari. He's the VP and GM at Midwestern Car Carriers. Now you see MWCCI on your screen. You can actually go there anytime. Here, I'm going to put the link in the live chat. You can go to MWCCI.com and follow along at home because then we're going to bring in Rod Jenkins, Operations Manager, and learn more about operations. And we're also going to bring in Ed Vaughn. He's a co-owner. And so this is a, this is a full suite 
of discussion of what it is to be an auto transport fleet. And many of you listen. I don't I don't need to introduce Midwestern car carriers to all of you. Many of you already know them. You've either worked for them, you are a driver for them, a sub hauler for them, a client of theirs, a service partner, and so I'm honored to have Midwestern car carriers on Auto Transport Intel. Uh, these are the kinds of guests this whole show is all about, and so it is my honor. And so uh, here we are, get together live on a Tuesday night to learn more about Midwestern car carriers, put a name with a face, and oh, do me a favor. Uh, we got another two hours together, so do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that like button, and also, you see that share button? Somebody, please, hit the share button, hit the copy button, text, email, social media, share with somebody the good news Guys, Midwestern Car Carriers is live on Auto Transport Intel on the YouTube channel. I don't know where else you're going to get this right now, right here. So share it, send out the message. And also, listen, if you are looking to get into auto transport, you want to learn more about being a carrier, a broker, a dispatcher, a hauler, you're a dealer with questions, go to autotransportintel.com, sign up, because that's what we're all about, education, information, and community. So do me a favor, stick around. Right after this, we're going to go into the live chat. I want to talk to you. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That's right, that's the voice of Sue. You all know Sue. She's my co-host every Thursday on Dispatching Live. If you're looking for a dispatch team, a dispatcher, a broker, or a car shipper with questions, you want to contact Sue at Murphy Auto Transport Services. I put the link in the live chat. She wants to help you or join us on a Thursday and roll the dice and see if you can find something good on the load board because we want to help you. So now it is time to go into the live chat. Now you're seeing the current live chat on your screen. I gotta back it up a second, um, but I wanna say hello to everybody. So Ben Brown was in here first. What's up, Ben Brown? Barbara Steele, she's in the live chat. Now Barbara Steele is in the live chat to help answer questions throughout the rest of the show as we have Joe and we have Rod and we have Ed. If you have a live chat question and I don't get to it, uh, Barbara may be there to help you out. And so uh, thank you so much, Barbara, for doing that. Ty is here, best car shipping business channel. Well, you know, Ty, it is the only car shipping business channel, but thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Chris Chamberlain, want to get into transport, scheduled a call with Ty, that's perfect. Um, and here, I'm just going to put Ty, call Ty. 417-483-2764. There you go. The number is in the live chat. You can circumvent all the uh, the links and the whatnot if you want to. Yes, Barbara is in the live chat, ready to help you. Andrew Serica is here. What's up, Andrew Serica? Secure Motor Transport saying hello. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Barbara handles safety, compliance, and recruiting, so if you're interested, let her know. Mark from Superflow Systems is here. What is up, Mark? Uh, thanks for tuning in, buddy. Do appreciate it. And you're up next. Um, actually, you're uh, you're during the break. Um, so stick around for that. What's he talking about? I don't know. You'll have to stick around. Joseph Macari is in the live chat. Good evening. Good everyone. Uh, good evening. Good everyone. Okay, that's pretty cool. We're looking forward to this evening's live stream. Joe, we're excited to have you. Uh, we were really pumped a month ago to have you on Cars on the Move. But then to scoot you up to a Tuesday night's live premiere show is awesome, and it's everybody's dream. Okay. Fritz Duval says, what's up? Hey, Fritz. How you doing, buddy? Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics. Man, everybody's ringing the bell. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Ron Sestak from Six Pack Trucking is here. What's up, Ron? Gary P, 5 North at Templin Highway and Grapevine. Two right lanes blocked. Accident backed up to Valencia. Ouch. 
Ouch, man. Bla backed up to Valencia. That's a long backup. And uh, the Grapevine, 5 North, that's north of Los Angeles. That's not somewhere you want to have an accident. So I'm sorry to hear that, but it sounds like you'll have plenty of time to enjoy the entire show and maybe one after. I'm kidding. Hopefully not. Knucklehead says, what's up? What's up, Knucklehead? Um, and, uh, and listen, you know, and Knucklehead knows this. If you want to contact me, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and you can send me an image you want in industry news, ask me a question, and I'll refer you. I can send you over to Ty, I can send you over to Brian, I can send you over to Mark, I can send you over to Sue, or do you want to be part of the network? I'll send you to Lionel. No, I'm kidding. Seriously, send me an email at autotransportintel at gmail.com, and please do let me know, can you hear me and see me? What out of what's he doing? Uh, if you can, you see me and hear me, okay. All right. And Ty, there we go. Thank you, Ty. Ty throws in the twenty-five bucks super chat. You know, super chats are welcome on Auto Transport Intel. Obviously, they're welcome anywhere. But anything you donate or give, and I've had some folks that instead of doing a super chat, they just donate offline, send me an email. That's great. Everything goes back in the channel, and um, you know, it, Tuesday is my is my long work day. I work on this show. I work on the live show this evening all day long. I, I mean, all I prep all week, but I work on it all day long. So thank you so much. It all goes back in the channel. Wet Chrome Logistics. What's up? What's up, uh, Trevor? Thanks for ringing the bell and saying hello. Um, you know, and Kim, actually, she's not here this evening, Ty. She's not feeling well. She needed to get some rest, so I don't think we'll see her. But if she does wake up or, you know, if she's sleepwalking or something, she might join the live chat. So if you see sleepwalking in the live chat, let me know. Jay, you're looking good tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. That's so cool. Well, you know, I shaved, and um, it's amazing. I, I think I can take off an entire half of my life when I shave. So... Thank you for noticing. I do appreciate it. And it feels good. You know, it feels good. Finally get to sit and enjoy the show. That's awesome. We're glad you have time to enjoy and sit and watch and participate. And this is going to be a good one. Man, of all the shows you made it to, this one's going to be amazing. I'm super excited. Uh, Danny B is here. Silverman, what's up, fellas? Adam M., what's up, guys? Wow. Everybody is tuning in. Finest Towing and Recovery. Hey, guys. Hope everyone is well. See you and hear you. That is amazing. Man, we have an awesome live chat going on tonight. So uh, without any further ado, let's do this. Um, we're going to... Let's... let's uh, what are we doing? Even with all the tools at our disposal, there is still about 48 million empty miles in our network. Empty miles happen when driver Bob makes his delivery and returns home without freight. After all, there aren't cars just waiting for delivery on every corner. But there is non-automotive freight, and our network is already active around the country. So what if Bob could leverage his trailer to deliver something other than cars? We searched high and low to find a way to do this within regulations, and we found it. We can do this now with current equipment, and we're working on innovative new trailers that will deliver even more cars and more freight. This is a total game changer, and here's the math. We're already paying the cost of those 48 million empty miles, and with no revenue to show for it. We can make $1.50 to $2.50 in revenue per mile with dry freight. Since dry freight is not as specialized as automotive, backhauls can be found without adding miles to Bob's trip. This means Jack Cooper will make even more profit, and our drivers will make even more money. It also means fewer miles in America's delivery network and lower carbon emissions for the country. Call it a win-win-win-win for driver Bob, for Jack Cooper, for America, and for our investors. We're Jack Cooper, driving innovation for the 21st century. Thank you so much for that, Jack Cooper. Oh, do make sure if you are looking for a career, go to jackcooper.com forward slash careers. And also, next week, we're going to have Jack Cooper back on the show, um, so you won't want to miss that. So, so check out all that information. Also, I want to mention this. And I see it in the live chat. If you missed somebody's information, yes, we want to help you get connected. We want to help you network. And we also, hey, Ty, when is our next Cars on the Move roundtable? Is that next Monday night? The monthly Cars on the Move roundtable is really interesting, really helpful. And the way to also, you can either go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, 
Or better yet, go ahead and uh, call Ty. And here again, I'm going to put Ty's phone number. Ty really helps me make sure that everybody stays connected. I don't take many phone calls anymore. I'm just, man, we go live four times a week now. It's crazy. Tuesday night's live, Wednesday's DOT, Thursday dispatching live, Friday cars on the move, rinse and repeat. And so, um, yeah, I'm working on the channel. He helps connect our community. And Ty, thank you so much for that, buddy. It is time to go into, it's 8.15. Man, we're right on time. This is the Midwestern Car Carrier Show. If it seems like, a, if, if some of this seems a little rehearsed, you know, this is episode 171 in a row on a Tuesday night. And so, man, I better have some of this down, right? Because 170, that's three years in a row. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, okay, Midwestern car carriers may not be new to you. I'm actually still learning more and more about them. This is the homepage on their website. Go to mwcci.com. And again, I'm going to share that link in the live chat. That way, you can click on the website. Everybody, do it. You can just listen to me talk. You don't have to see me, although you are going to want to see industry news. But here's, you know, we're going to learn more about, uh, so from 1976 to today, we're going to learn more about MWCCI Midwestern Car Carriers. Here are some of their uh, service partners who they work with. This is some of their service areas. And, I, you know, I really appreciate seeing this graphic on the website. You get the service area. That is awesome. Thanks for, man, a great website. Really informative. Um, also, some more information about such as their drive program, dependability, resources, information, vision, ethics. So you can ask questions about, you know, company culture, right? You want to know who you're working with. And you can contact MCCI, WMWCCI. <laughs> at mwcci.com. Also, Barbara Steele can answer any of your questions in the live chat. We're going to have Joe on. We're going to have Ron on. Oh, and this was shared on Facebook today. Thanks for doing that. Man, getting the word out about the show and the collaboration and the community. Even saw it on, uh, on Auto Transport Everything. So awesome. Thank you for that. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for Everybody coming together to share information. That is super cool. You know, I talk about the entire industry ecosystem, right? OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations, and loads, as I've identified it. So tonight's intersection, right? We're focused on carrier's equipment, but there's also some brokering. Oh, wait, what did he say? There's some brokering? Yes, there's brokering going on. It's part of being in the business to serve all your clients. For OEMs. So we're going to be talking about all those things. You know, on Auto Transport Intel, we have a habit of sometimes confusing folks. Hey, Hellcat, Issy, what's up? Back of the store, front of the store, what are you guys talking about? Where are you? We talk about it all because it's not, you know, it's not just one vertical. I, I see that mistake and I don't know why it's so common. We have many verticals. We are a large nation of auto transport information. And I know I wasn't a driver. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that are owners that never drove either. There's a lot of information and it doesn't matter who you get it from as long as it's somewhat reliable. And that's why I, I'm not the expert end all be all, but I will tell you this, there is a back of the store and a front of the store. Ooh, Mark, thanks buddy. Thanks for ringing the bell. You know, Mark Grodeke at Superflow Systems, end-to-end -end auto transport software, we see technology all the time. In fact, a lot of industry news is technology news. Um, but, uh, you know, whether you are, you, let's say you got a customer, are you going to are you gonna just write it down on a, on a sheet of paper? Okay, so, all right, what was that again? All right, so let's see, you've got a Nissan Sentra. No, you don't do that. You go to your computer, you put in the information, you use a CRM, Superflow's got that, put in the lead, then you, uh, you, as you get more information, you add all that digitally, you manage it in a TMS, you send it to the driver's mobile app, mark the inspections, email, text, right, contactless, all that stuff, and then ultimately, once you want to get paid, you might even get paid digitally. Well, market Superflow Systems, he has all the parts of the end-to-end -end solution. So thank you, Mark, for ringing the bell and participating in the channel. That is truly front of the store and the back of the store, as I was just describing. It is 2021, the year of the hybrid. 
Who else saw that? I just saw a car commercial a few days ago. Was it a car commercial? No. So they were talking about the hybrid. 2021 and the hybrid. Amazing. So thank you. It is the year of the hybrid. And um, the reason is, is because you're going to have some physical and some digital, no matter what you're doing. Physical and digital are meeting. It's for sure. For example, Central Dispatch, Mannheim, DHL, that's hybrid. Carvana, buying online, selling from the driveway, hybrid, even in auto transport. Auto transport meet car sales, hybrid. CarMax, Omnichannel, hybrid. CarMax's long-stated goal has been to give customers, it's interesting I was reading this, the chance to transact when, where, and how they want, whether in the physical or the digital realms or in both, a concept known as Omnichannel. Now we know what Omnichannel is. Digital, physical, hybrid. Um, in fact, CarMax is, let's see here, let's learn more about CarMax. Fiscal third quarter ended November 30. About 70% of customers who bought a vehicle interacted with a customer experience center, and more than half of all customers chose to advance their transaction in some way online. Still, most customers opted to complete vehicle purchases inside a store. Fewer than 10% of vehicle sales completed in CarMax's third quarter were what the company calls alternative deliveries, which include home delivery and curbside pickup. Uh-oh, there's home delivery again. We're now focused on enabling self-service for all components of the sale. It is part of the omnichannel of CarMax. Uh, now, you know, we did do Wheel of Topics uh, that was the previous show. That was a week ago. We've been doing topic. We've been doing wheel of topics for months. There is a lot of topics, and we we definitely want to cover. And we want to hear what are the topics you want to cover. Tell me your topics. These are some of the topics we covered last week: online events, uh, marketplace, car hauling advice, mobile apps. What's it going to take to stay the number one broker? Consumer delivery. We're talking home delivery. There it is again. Equipment inspections, vehicle marketing, supply chain, hiring drivers, and repo market. That's a lot of top. That's that's just 10 topics. There's way more than that. So one of the other things I like to talk about, sometimes I dive into a little bit of history. So this is interesting. This was on freight waves. Maritime history evolution of car carriers. The modern car carrier could not have evolved without a period of dual purpose and converted ships. And uh, we're going back decades on this. Uh, now, a car today, a car carrier is referred to as a pure car carrier or a pure car and truck carrier holding about 8,000 automobiles. The difference between the two is the size and the strength of the ramps. On a PCC, the, difference, the distance between the decks could only be five feet, allowing a maximum number of cars to be carried. That's pretty tight, compact shipping. Uh, prior to the 60s, the transport of cars was accommodated on traditional tween-deck ships. Each car was lifted on and off using derricks or cranes. Wow, no roll-on, no roll-off. No row-row. <laughs> By the early 60s, export volumes of car companies had reached higher capacities. They needed better cargo to accommodate bolt carriers intended for this transport fitted with special decks. Uh, that's interesting. And these decks were lowered on chains. During bulk cargo, the, the decks would be collapsed, sandwiched, so that they could do cars or freight. Ooh, cars or freight. There it is again. Um, in the 1970s, two such ships all, uh, known as auto bulk carriers, the Norse, the Norse Variant and Anita, lost in storms, um, fully loaded, and it sounds like the... Uh, the Stormy seas were causing problems, so they had to redesign again. And then I think that's when they started to come up with roll on, roll off. Just a little bit of car shipping history there on the ocean. Um, there's more. You can go to Freight Waves, keep reading about it. But basically, uh, by the 1980s, the converted car carriers were rapidly being replaced with the economical carriers we see today. And then, of course, we see the wind powered car carrier. Uh, that was recent news, too. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping you news, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, and by the way, if you want to uh, you want to you want to get your image on industry news, send it to me. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. Just take that in. <laughs> that is that is pretty awesome. I really, really like that. 
Okay. Uh, just a pinch of salt when you are traveling down the road. Put it up on the big screen. Auto Transport Intel Tuesday nights live. Sign up for the Insider. Talk to Ty. Get on the Cars on the Move run, round table and find out what's in the punch. What is it? What is he talking about, honey? Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers, post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. Just go to superflowsystems.com. Here, I'm going to put it in the live chat. I was talking about Mark. I was talking about end-to-end -end software solutions. You can go to superflowsystems.com. The link is there in the live chat. Find out more about how Superflow Systems can help you. And if you haven't already logged into dispatchcenter.com, right? Dispatchcenter.com. Go there. Set up an account. Log in. It's free. And also, you might want to try out Check Truckify mobile app. Check out the Truckify.com mobile app. I do want to say hello to, I see Jay Wilson is here. What's up, Jay Wilson? And Adam M. talking about CarMax. Yeah. So, you know, next time you're at CarMax, you know, start talking up about Omnichannel and, you know, hey, what's up? You know, I hear I'm brought in another Omnichannel car. You know, or not. Anyways, Cox Automotive buys, now I don't know how to say this, Fusion, Fusion, F-Y-U-S-I-O-N. <laughs> fusion. I guess it's Fusion. I don't know. And Dickinson Fleet Services. There we go. Jay will definitely remember it. I don't know if it'll be helpful. But um, now Cox Automotive, this is today. They made quite the splash. Uh, they mount, uh, announced two major purchases today to add um, additional muscle to their wholesale and their mobility units. Cox said it's acquired Fusion. I'm just going to go with that for now. A company in the computer vision and vehicle imaging solution space, okay, Fusion Imaging, and then Dickinson Fleet is a mobile maintenance provider of medium and heavy duty trucks. So let's learn more about what that means. Um, the addition of Fusion will largely center on the Mannheim wholesale side of the business where Dickinson. Uh, I should find a way to mispronounce Dickinson, so just so that it's even. Um, purchase expands the offering of Pivot. Now, we don't talk about Pivot very much, but they work, I guess, in maintenance on site, which mobile maintenance, man, that 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 is a growing market too. So anyways, Fusion and Mannheim started working together a couple years ago, but they're really centered on building imaging capabilities to help Mannheim Express improve the wholesale vehicle listings process. Now, I mean, as we talk about digital listings, load boards, you can see where this is going. I could see some kind of high-tech cartoony inspection stuff happen in the future. Not cartoony, but you know what I mean. Anywhere a car can be imaged, we believe the new tech that Cox Automotive and Fusion create together will translate to big benefits for our clients across the industry. Um, and the types of services uh Fusion <laughs> provides certainly are important as the auction industry in fact 83 percent of its inventory is purchased by digital buyers holy smokes did you hear that ty did t what yeah dude 83 percent ty that's for real and then so dickinson adds to it pivot fleet services mobile maintenance for medium heavy duty trucks and trailers um, and that, that is, that's a growing market. So that's very interesting. So that, and that is today Cox Automotive stuff. 
Um, if you want to learn more about Cox Automotive, I would imagine everybody does. Why not? All the time. January 25th, they're going to kick off a 10-day virtual event. Now, how do you register for it? Huh? What, what is all this value? Uh, go to coxautoinc.com. So let's see here. I'm just going to share it here. I'm going to share the link. In case you haven't, if you haven't been here, go check it out. You definitely find it informative. I've been going here for years. coxautoinc.com. And if you click on the link, there's a register now button. And I'll tell you, I did. I went here today. I registered. It never asked me for any money. So do I get? I get. Yeah, it says. Oh, it says it right there. Look at that. It's a free 10-day virtual event. Yeah. Right on. I'll take some of that. Uh, Massachusetts is going to require new cars sold to be electric by 2035. We saw that California did this as well. And so let's talk about EV. Now, this uh, article, there's a lot of articles going on, but this one says electric cars future starts this year in 2021. This is the year of the EV. Now, I thought it was the year of the hybrid. Well, anyways, I guess it's the year of the EV and the year of the hybrid. Okay, fine. Um, now, here's some, check out, watch these headlines. Watch this closely. Okay, Automotive News reports that Tesla delivers 499-550 vehicles in 2020, just shy of their target. This one says Tesla hit half a million car target. This one says Tesla very narrowly misses their 500,000 target. By the way, whose target is this? Uh, oh, it's Elon Musk's target. Okay, 180,000, allegedly, uh, 180,570 vehicles in the last three months of the year, eclipsing its prior all-time high of 139,300 in the third quarter of 2020. Listen, if you think you got it, <laughs> oh, man, stick around, because here's the thing. Um, number one, uh, yeah, they th here's their financial, you know, uh, Tesla zooms past $700 billion in market value after nearly hitting, oh, it's nearly, okay, they did hit it, I don't know, I'm confused at this point, but there's also Neo, Xpeng, and Li auto rise on growth in December deliveries, ah, so it's not just Tesla, looks like there's something going on, there's something going on in the EV market, Neo jumps 12% after reporting record monthly and quarterly EV deliveries, okay, and, uh, oh, here's some bad news. This 2021 Model 3 would have been rejected if the owner could have inspected it properly. Say what? Really? Is that, that's gotta be an isa isolated incident. Oh, wait, true tales of ridiculous fails? Oh, this is another Tesla YouTube video? Are there more? Oh, no. Tesla service centers are preventing delivery refusals in weird ways. Okay, I didn't listen. I didn't make it. I'm just reporting the news. But what's really interesting is the guy that made this video, he's talking about panel gaps and quality issues. All right, count it. Okay, there's a panel gap. The door doesn't shut properly. Uh, oh, there's a gap. Let's see. Oh, there's a, there's a gap on the light. Uh, oh, there's a uh, crease in the seat cushion. More than one. Um, there's a gap somewhere in the roof interior, and then there's some tape left over. Um, so anyways, what we noticed was there were many, and he was still excited to receive his Tesla. Talk about brand loyalty. Dang, can we get some of that around up in here? Anyways, Volkswagen wants to deploy charging robots by 2021. I thought, well, that'll be, that'll be interesting. See all these robots around the car hauler. I don't know. Um, but we are going to keep on talking about, it is now 2021, we've got DOT compliance every Wednesday at noon, every Wednesday. I mean, there are DOT questions out the wazoo. For example, what about, uh, what about this? Did you check your calendar? Are you an owner operator? Did you query yourself? <laughs> well, I, yeah, I hope so. I hope you, you I hope you've queried yourself because time has run out and um, and you know what Paul try again Paul I can't I'm trying to share your link and I'm having a difficult time here let's see what if I do this uh, there we go that worked in the live chat so somebody got that strange YouTube era again I'm looking I'm looking for Sarah Connor that's awesome dude. okay well anyways um, 
Yeah, man, DOT compliance. So we'll talk about that tomorrow with Brian. What does this mean? What are the ramifications? Um, then there's dispatching live every Thursday at noon. Are you dispatching cars? Are you searching load boards? Or have you just had it with dispatchers entirely? I'm telling you, you're going to like this show because it's the crazy show. Um, it's the crazy show because we roll the dice. We roll the dice every Thursday at noon. And, uh, and it's true. I mean, I got poker chips, dice, cards. I got a dart. I got a flag. I got the bell. And we shake them up. And we take our chances every Thursday at noon on Dispatching Live. We got cars on the moon every... Car <laughs> Ooh, did you hear that, Ty? Cars on the moon. You know, I was watching Ad Astra last night. It's a movie, Brad Pitt, space, science fiction. So maybe it just uh, popped into my head there. But cars on the move. We're connecting dealers, auction, and dealers, auctions, and carriers, buddy. I'll tell you what. Um, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the news. I am gonna finish it. Cars on the move. We were live in the snow last Friday. That's right. Car haulers do work in the snow. Although it was interesting, the only ones out there were the cops. But anyways, we are gonna be here with Jack Cooper next Tuesday night. You're going to want to check that out. Also, in two weeks, we've got ARI, Fleet Management. How much do you know about fleet management companies? And BlackBook's going to join us. Paul Machine, my friend of BlackBook. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. Are you are you exhausted? Over? Man, we're only... Oh, by the way, I got the timing almost right. We're, we're only 36 minutes into this show. It's exhausting. But there's so much to talk about, Right. And, um, and so we got to try to fit it in. We got to get it in somehow. But here's what I want to do. Before I go any further, uh, remember I told you that we met with Joe Bercari live on Cars on the Move a month ago. Here is Ty and Joe. And while I roll this, Ty, get ready because you're going to be joining me. We're going to talk about Midwestern car carriers. And then we're going to start bringing in the family. So, so here we go. Roll the clip. Hey, Jay, thanks for having us on. I'm in the transport parking lot again <laughs> on Friday with Joe. Hey, Joe. Good to meet you. What do, what do you guys what do you guys do here? We haul cars, baby. <laughs> we move metal. We have a lot of metal. We, we make now, steel disappear. Yeah, 90% new, uh, 90%. multitude of manufacturers. We've done business with uh, with Ford, uh, Hyundai, Kia, uh, by way of Glovis. Uh, we do a, quite a good bit of business with FCA. In business over 30 years, two uh, two co-owners that's been owned, uh, you know, these guys are have very experienced that started in car hall, uh, you know, live and breathe it. We, we offer very competitive pay. Uh, that's that's number one thing. Uh, you know, most drivers, the first question they ask is, what, what can I make? Um, so uh, we, we our average salary in a down year is anywhere between eighty five and ninety thousand dollars. And, you know, and that's before we get into things like bonus programs and such from Kansas City up to Chicago okay. over to uh, basically Detroit, uh, Toledo, Ohio, then come down to Atlanta, okay. come across to Shreveport, and then back up to Kansas City. Okay. That's that is our sweet spot. And so, if you're within a hundred miles of, of any of those lines, then odds are good that we'll be able to load you. We can make it happen. Okay, so that is Ty talking to Joe. Also, let's do this while uh, Ty is on his way in here, and I'm going to go ahead and share this. There's Ty right now knocking at the door, but Paul just shared this, the fixedopsroundtable.com. This is, if you click that link that starts with Eventbrite, you can go here, register for free, complimentary general admission to the uh, fixedopsroundtable.com. Definitely want to check that out, and here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share, and here comes Ty. Ooh, all of the suspense, and in the live chat, guys, thanks so much. Uh, hey, what's up, Panther Gamer 32 How you doing there, buddy? Um, and while Ty is getting situated, what else we got? Okay, so we got Paul from Dealer Vendor Match. You're good, Ty. Go ahead and take your time, buddy. Um, and uh, getting set up there on the camera. I just want to share also, DealerVendorMatch.com. Um, Paul Meyer had Ty live on his YouTube channel on Sunday night. There was a lot of great information there. Um, and maybe Ty wants to help me talk about that some more. Without further ado, Ty, buddy, can you see us and hear us okay? I can. Can you see and hear me okay? I hear you. I see you. 
I should put the cars on the move. There we go. Cars on the move live in the snow. No, we're not live in the snow. But we are. And this is cars on the move. This is. Are you having any deja vu right now? We're, 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 this is part round table. It's part cars on the move. It's part Tuesday nights live. Dude, how you doing? I'm doing really good. And I'm also, I'm happy you talked about Paul Meyer, our friend Paul Meyer. Okay. I keep plugging Paul Meyer. Dealervendormatch.com, right? He's got, it's, he's got this technology that connects you with dealers. So anyway, our friend Paul Meyer uh, had me on his show Sunday night. And I got to tell you, dude, I went way over. <laughs> I kept talking and talking. This, it was so amazing. And I'll tell you why, because nobody in that, that world has ever met anybody in this world. And they were like, what? I, you know, so I, you're, and I got to tune in, right? I was, I tuned in for, I don't know how much I got to see. Um, I was on YouTube, looked like everyone else was on LinkedIn. Um, because, uh, just like you're right, Omni channel. Um, <laughs> do you have anything in there? I've got mine yeah. over here. Yeah. See, I've got my punch, right? I, everything, pretty much everything in my background is a prop. Um, well, let's make actually, that's it right. Dressing. Hold on. This we got to, Ooh. Midwestern. Make, yeah, Midwestern. So back to okay. So thank you, Paul. That was that was amazing, intense, yeah. awesome. I mean, it, it really was. And you know, I didn't mean to cut you off, but no. really, it, love it. You know, you guys hear Jay talking about stuff that doesn't mean anything to anybody, right? Why do we need to worry about that? That's not in my lane. My lane is super trucker. I'm super trucker, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it's so true. No, listen. I am. I know. I really am super trucker. I know. <laughs> I mean, I've got, no, I've you're got not. a lot of you, stories. Dude. You do. You're, you, you, <laughs> listen, here's what's so funny. For being a super trucker, you're the one that dragged me into talking about dealers so much. And now I'm, I'm addicted. I can't stop talking about car dealers. Well, and, and again, that's what that's why back to Paul. So, so we get a guy like Paul who's heavily invested in, involved in a community that's called the fixed ops world right you transport cars like me super trucker i got i'm a stinger guy i know how to load them i know how to load a high rail i know how to drive one I, i've done it right why are we talking to a guy like paul well there's a story i'm going to tell the story i'll make it fast <clears throat> so paul's in fixed ops lane so I've, I've hauled cars for a long time for new car stores, right? And used car stores. But one of the new car stores, Roper, Pontiac, GMC, Joplin, Missouri. Hal Roper, the owner, original founder. His son, Randy. Randy had a habit of going to the auction and buying 30, 40 cars a whack, right? <clears throat> so I would get all those cars delivered next day. And I thought, man, I'm doing an incredible job. I mean, literally next day on the lot. Uh, 30, 40 cars, no problem. Well, I, I take the keys into the service department and I meet Jim. Jim's the service manager at Roper Pontiac GMC Buick, Joplin, Missouri. Jim does not look happy that I did an incredible job, better than anybody on planet Earth, by delivering the cars overnight. I know Randy's happy, right? So I talked to Jim for a little while. I figure out Jim's mad for a reason. OK, he's mad because Randy didn't tell him that he was going to go buy 30 or 40 cars. Now he has to rearrange his entire program. What does that have to do with hauling cars, Ty? It has a lot to do. If you make friends with Jim, Jim's going to life's going to be a lot better. You know why? Because I called Jim. So I trained Randy, my dealer, to text me before he goes to the auction, at least the day before. Worst case that morning. At least give me a heads up. OK. I got him trained to do that. So what happened next was, is I would get the text or the call and I would forward it to the service manager, Jim, because I knew Randy is a busy guy. I don't think he's intentionally trying to have Jim make a bad day, right? So anyway, it all goes together. That's why we got people like Paul. That's why we've got people like Joe and Ed and Randy coming on tonight. <clears throat> That's why you see Jay talking about a lot about this front end stuff, these CarMax, Carvana. I mean, Things are changing fast, guys. I've been here 20 years, and we're going to talk to a guy here in a minute. And he's going to—he's been 
in it way bigger than I've been in it. And he'll tell us about some changes too. So that's enough for me. But thank no, you, Paul. I love it, man. It, it, it is. It's a good segue because the deal is, yes, this is, it is the Midwestern Car Carriers uh, event episode Tuesday Night's Live. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully we can celebrate more of those, but you know, we talk about all kinds of stuff and in all those verticals, OEMs, auctions, dealers, carriers, brokers, services, regulations, loads, equipment, there's a lot to talk about. So without further ado, here's what we need to do. We need to right, cause, right. Joe's like, Hey, what's going on? I'm ready to go. All right. So we are going to, um, let's do this. I'm clean up the screen. We're going to, I'm going to roll this short video. Now, Ty, you can't see this, but you'll remember it was a month ago. Cars on the move. You already saw a small clip. Remember when the truck pulled in the lot at Midwestern car carriers? Here we go. So. This, this is, is our, our truck, truck package, package 22, 22 5, 22 5, 5 is all the way around, 80 foot long. You can get, and on this one, I think you can get six trucks, full size trucks. Six, right? six half tons. Uh, you run out of pounds before you go when you get into three quarter tons. But uh, yeah, we can load six, six of just about any style pickup truck to. Uh, I think we get up right around seventy-eight thousand. I think is the is the overall weight when you're doing six like F one fifties or. Know, that's like that. pretty impressive. It's a great piece great. of equipment. It, yeah, it is. Very oh. versatile. That's the other thing that we like about these. You know, you can load just eight or nine SUVs, depending on size. You can load six pickup trucks. You can load mixtures of, of, uh, of all of the above. Matter of fact, uh -oh. like we got another one coming in. Yeah. And, uh, wow, this is great. He might be one of our uh, local guys. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And uh, so you can actually Ooh, see. Oh, here we go, guys. This here, is good. Here's it's coming up. Uh, coming in from uh, one of our... KCK operations. KCK operation. Okay. Your Argentine. Again. Argentine. Got it. Look at that. Can you guys see it? That's a pretty truck. There you go. We got it. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Woo. Dang. We say that's how we roll. That is. That's how we roll. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Man, I wouldn't mind driving for you guys. Put in an application. <laughs> Go online. Got, yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the qualifications are all on our website. And if you're just tuning in, so we just rolled the, uh, that was the clip of the car hauler rolling into the Midwestern Car Carriers facility in Kansas City. That was a month ago. We were live on Cars on the Move with Ty, with Joe Burkari. Um, and if you're if you're watching right now, you know that I was just talking to Ty. Well, check it out. Joe just entered the room now. Let me make sure um, that I say hello. Joe, how you doing? Okay, so we can't hear him. Um, check audio check. And otherwise... Okay, and there's yep. Joe. Rookie so, mistake. No, no, and it happens all the Believe me, oh my gosh, I've done that. How many times have I done that live? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But without further ado, Joe, please do say hello to the Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Night's live audience and tell us a little bit more about what we're going to do tonight. Hi, how are you? I'm Joe, and I'm just glad to be here. Uh, I'm glad to talk about moving some metal and talk about uh, our industry and uh, some some things about our company that are uh, exciting and uh, on the horizon. And uh, we're look, looking forward to a brighter 2021 than, uh, than what 2020 looked like. You know, um, it, that is, it's interesting how, that's what I like about, I like, I like it that we sleep so that we can wake up the next day fresh. We're lucky that the that the calendars turn. I don't want to get too philosophical, but yeah, hopefully, right, we can clean off the slate a little bit, and that 2021 brings us more uh, good fortune. So, uh, speaking of that, okay, so what, Joe? What do you do, and at, at, what do you do, and what is Midwestern Car Carriers? Please, for anyone. Well, I'm the. the I'm the general manager for uh, Midwestern Car Carriers. We are a full service, uh, new and uh, used vehicle delivery uh, service provider. Uh, we operate primarily in the Midwest, uh, as was indicated in one of your uh, earlier little uh, snippet vi videos. Yeah. Are a, um, 
Uh, we have, our box basically is from Kansas City up to Chicago, over to Detroit, down to Atlanta, across to Shreveport, and then back up over to Kansas City. That, that's pretty much our sweet spot. We go uh, as far north as, as Minnesota and the Dakotas. We go as far south as Pensacola. Uh, we, we do cover traffic areas in Ohio and uh, Louisiana, Mississippi. <clears throat> we are a, uh, a fleet of about uh, 50, uh, 55 or so uh, company trucks uh, with uh, nine owner operators that are currently leased on. So we're in the neighborhood of about 65, uh, 65 uh, power units and pieces. In addition to that, we're full service brokerage. Uh, so we also broker our contract business out to partner carriers and sub haulers. Happens every day, all the time. Uh, we are um, a, a, a very uh, aggressively uh, uh, growth oriented company. Uh, we are, and we are hiring. And as our website is indicates, first thing that you're gonna see when you come to our website, there's no question that we're hiring. We are definitely hiring. We're looking to put people on uh, at an absolute ferocious pace this uh, last six weeks, I think we've put, uh, uh, I think nine uh, new employees on, uh, on the roster. Uh, and I think we just, we just cleared the, the last two from orientation today. Uh, they'll be hauling cars tomorrow morning. So uh, it is a, uh, you know, 2020 wow. is, is, we're, is mashing the gas on us. We are, we are moving. Wow. And then when we bring in Rod in operations, <laughs> we can talk more about training and some of those specifics. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I wanted to, let's see here. I made a list of some some of the topics I wanna make sure we cover, because we're just getting, we're, right, we're just getting our bearings, we're here, we're live, right? This probably isn't something you do very often, going no, live on YouTube. Well, <laughs> no, it, I, not, not per se. I mean, um, uh, this, this is uh, my first time, on, well, second time, I guess, on YouTube. You're, you guys are, were, uh, were my first. Anyway, the <laughs> all right, but it's not my first stream. So we, I've, I have done stuff like this before. Okay, cool. But uh, I do. Um, I, I, I'm excited actually to bring this to uh, you know, kind of to the electronic medium because you now the time. Once upon a time, it was word of mouth that got a driver to an application and an application into management's hands, and and that's not the world today. You know, now uh, we live in a much more virtual world. You know. You, we walk around with a, a computer more powerful than than everything that they sent up onto into the moon in your in your your pocket. You know the, the width and breadth of all human knowledge is is you know one question away. So uh, you know th those connections I think uh, have have uh, made things a lot more competitive in terms of being able to find you know find help and uh, you know uh, find right. the goods for people. Because what we've talked about, I mean, when it comes to hiring, mm -hmm. is it everybody's hiring, right? Yeah, and there, there's a radical driver shortage uh, just, you know, in general. Our industry suffered uh, um, uh, some slippage of, of car haulers who ended up going into other avenues, other, other industries, freight, steel, and stuff like that, because, you know, that's what was moving during the, the recent uh, pandemic. But, you know, um, I, I've... I, I grew up in this business and, uh, you know, from, from some very old, old uh, and, and respected names. I worked with some, uh, some very, very uh, great teachers and some grumpy old men who uh, taught me very early on that if you're, if you're not hiring, you're dying. And that means that you have to train and, uh, you know, a large part of the time. So we're, we're constantly trying to bring new blood into our business and car hauling is a is such a unique thing i mean i've been here for 20 doing this for 23 years and um i tell people all the time if i wanted a, a vacation i'd go to work at freight this is this kind of business it just gets into your blood and if you and you just can't can't do anything else i sure can't i, I this is all i know so uh it, it's a it's a unique it, it's a unique thing and when you find that person that you can train from you know having a cdl and getting them, you know, to the point where they are hauling cars and making great money and you know great benefits for their family, man, there's not much better. You know that finding that connection and making it fit is fabulous. On that, and I, you know, Ty, I'm sure you have some thoughts because I was going to say, uh, as you say that, right? If if you're if you're if you're a good car hauler and you're in high demand because everybody's hiring, how do you choose which company to work with? What is it that's going to make you want to work for that company? 
And there's two, there's two first two questions every, every uh, driver asks is going to be, uh, number one, how much am I going to make? What are my earnings potential? Number two, what type of equipment am I going to be using? What kind of truck am I going to be driving? Uh, Midwestern uh, has an extremely competitive uh, pay structure. We, uh, we pay percent of revenue. Uh, it, it is based on experience. So the, uh, if we train, then it's a little bit less than if you come in with experience. There are qualifications and requirements, which uh, Barb Steele does a fabulous job of disseminating out to all of our, uh, all the people who apply. And then, you know, from there, the sky's the limit. You know, you're, you control your earnings based upon how, uh, you know, how your schedule works, your family lifestyle, uh, you know, can allow you to do. We try at the, on the dispatch side, try and fit the right driver with the right dispatch so that that way they're doing the thing that allows them to maximize their growth and their earnings. And then, you know, Midwestern also, we just very recently uh, put out a, a new incentive program for uh, drivers with no claims. A driver with no claims can earn up to $6,000 in, in, in bonus money if you have no claims for an entire year. A driver who hits our productivity standards can earn at least $5,000 worth of, or excuse me, uh, uh, a, a scale of $5,000 worth of incremental uh, uh, bonus if they hit the various productivity standards that, uh, that we set. And, and that's, they actually can go higher than that based upon certain criteria. So there, there's a lot of stuff that we put into our package to make it attractive where drivers are out, they're earning money, they're making it for us, making it for themselves and you know, taking home a, a generous check. That's, that's, that's what we found has worked here. And then on top of that, uh, the second question actually uh, is the equipment. Um, Midwestern has an extremely young freak fleet. Uh, we are, uh, we operate basically about a two year old uh, average fleet age. We do have some trucks that are older than two years, but the, on average, we're about two years old. And, uh, and we are taking delivery on new equipment now. As a matter of fact, I'm pleased to announce that Midwestern uh, has finalized an order for additional equipment, new equipment, 2020s and 2021 Peterbilts that will be coming into our fleet in the first quarter of this next year. And that's the beginning. We are poised to add uh, between 10 and 20 additional pieces of equipment if the business warrants and if we're able to put back ends inside of those seats. So Midwestern is on the move and we are on the grow in a big way. Wow. Incredible. That's huge. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. Yep. Um, you meant, you said something in, in just a minute ago and I, and I wanted to just highlight it real quick about your experience in this, in this business and how once mm -hmm. it's kind of like it's in your blood, you, you really don't do anything else. Right. That's right. And I, I think one of the other things that's important to emphasize for, for some of the people in our audience, cause we have people that maybe want to get into car hauling, as a driver or maybe as an owner operator. Mm -hmm. And I, and I get these calls all the time and I try to explain to people this, this business is, is the most rewarding business you can be in it period. Yeah. It really is at the same time, there's nothing easy about this business and it does require a lot of time. Right. Yeah. So when you see a guy like Joe sitting here saying, I've been doing this for a long time. I got trained by the hard ass guys. I know what's going on. Joe knows what's going on, right? And so he, he's giving you some, some advice here when he's talking about, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm still doing it. That means he loves what he does. And the, the opportunity- oh, I'm either dedicated or stupid, one of the two. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, yeah, I understand that for sure, but I don't think you're stupid. I, I've, I've got to talk to you a couple of times. So the next thing that, that you highlighted that I thought was really good, and, and you're right, if you're talking to somebody who wants to drive. So in our audience, right? I, I, again, I talk to a lot of guys and matter of fact, you guys in the audience, you guys know, Josh Thornton. He's our, he's a guy that we've been coaching down in Mississippi. He's up to two, uh, three trucks now. But anyway, I was talking to him. He had a little carrier that he was kind of using brokering, giving him the guy was cleaning up his messes as he went. The guy decided he didn't want in. And so Josh, I told Josh, I said, offer the guy a job. I promise you, he will make more money driving one of your trucks and shutting the door when he gets home, when, you know, back to the yard, wherever he's going, make more money, be home more, and probably be a lot happier. 
And so there, there are a lot, and that's why I'm excited to have you here. A lot of advantages to working for a company that cares, right? Well, you know, it's, it's cliche and, and uh, it sounds uh, kind of trite, but um, this is a people business. And, you know, we, you know, the, you build these relationships and whether that is the relationship between the driver and the company, the driver and, and dispatch, um, the driver and the person managing claims, you know, uh, that's a really good one. Let me bring that, let me kind of put that out here. Um, I, I have been in uh, many, before I got into this job, I worked for a, uh, uh, I worked at a lot of terminals at a much, much larger company. And I kind of bounced around a, a bunch and, and I put out a lot of fires. That was kind of one of my halfway jobs was to put out fires. And one of the, one of the places that I went to, there was a, a person who really struggled with claims and and claims management claims are a reality in our business they're an ugly reality but they are a reality and um if if the drivers do not believe that management has their back and is fighting for them to try and drive down claims or eliminate you know uh, some things that are that could be construed as fraudulent or erroneously coding the claims you know things just go backwards in a hurry. When that trust dissipates, then it spills over into all other parts of your business. And so it's a massive incentive, aside from it being the ethically correct thing to do, to, to listen to your people, be honest with them and tell the truth and do the right things and support them. There's also a really strong business case for it in terms of the longevity of your employee, their overall earnings power, and by the way, drive down the cost of claims while you're at it, you know, which is money comes right off the bottom line of, of anybody that's in this business. So, you know, this is a really uh, personality and person oriented, you know, type of exchange. It, it, you, know, you cannot run this business without people. You can't haul cars without drivers. It, those contracts don't sign themselves. People sign those contracts. People are customers who are paying for these cars that we are delivering, you know. That you can never remove the people aspect from this business. If you make it too mechanical, then then a, a lot of a lot of companies really struggle with that. Right. So I'm glad you're talking about claims. I've, everybody does it different. And I remember our pre pre show conference meeting we had where everybody was on the phone. Jay had brought up a good question, and I think Jay, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it something along the lines? What's your training program? Right. We did. We talked about training, and I think. I think Rod's going to go into that a little bit more, but being on the claims issue, yeah, stay on it because this is this is a really good point. Right. Well, well yeah, go ahead, Joe. I, I, it, it's it's kind of a, again we we call it kind of the darker side of our business in our office, uh, kind of our joke, our, our our gag, and uh, we have have one of the best claims people I've ever seen in my career that work that does the job for us. I mean, she's just fabulous. Um, just uh, you know, turns over every rock. Uh, whenever possible. And, you know, it, it has taken some time to, uh, to really kind of get, you know, certain aspects of our business in hand, you know, we you pick up new accounts, and then also a whole lot of new different dealers that you're working with. And, you know, it's a puzzle that you're trying to constantly put together. And, and you know, it, so there's sometimes is a kind of a steep learning curve. And I, I, I've used this uh, example once before, you know, when you're on the, on the other end of the claims telephone, when that phone rings, it's not some person, some driver that's sitting there and saying, guess what? I just delivered my 97th load and there's no damage. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, everything's cool. No, no, they're on the other line saying, I, uh, there's a ding on the front of this bumper and I don't know how the heck it got there, you know, and then, you know, then it's a matter of what's the damage control process and putting those sorts of, sorts of things together. And you'll hear that kind of mentality a lot in our business, by the way, the very crisis. Yeah. And, well, and you and, said something about, I just want to say this money, right? Cause this goes into the money the driver makes. Sure. Right. And that's why it is such a big deal to everybody. Ty, I cut you off. No, you're good. I, I'm just curious. So, you know, whether it's a new driver, experienced driver, I heard you've, you've got this really cool. If you don't do any claims, you can make this much additional money, which is incentivizing the, the driver mm -hmm. to be careful and do a good job. And yep. then what happens if the guys because I mean, I, I've had 20 drivers, 20 trucks. I had guys that we in in Joe's right, guys. We we damage cars. So one of the things I did was, you know, we try to have these meetings on a regular basis. Is you know, if I can have a meeting every week, I will, with the drivers. And one of the things that I always talk about, guys, I damage car. I've me Ty, 
I can, I've got more damages racked up than probably anybody, man. I mean, I'm good at damaging cars. Everybody cards. damages cars. Right? <laughs> so um, one of the things I learned early in, in doing my business was I'll pick up the phone and I'll call the dealer. Hey, I just smashed your car. It's smashed. Oh, fuck, tie. You know, boop, end of the world coming. To, what? <laughs> go ahead and bring it home. Let's take a look at it. Let's work with it. And those mistakes that I made as a driver hauling cars would always, if I did the right thing, right, if I told the truth, would always come back. And I would, I'm not saying I would be rewarded, but it would definitely strengthen the relationship. So back to Joe in Midwestern, you got a driver, he's a good guy, he makes a couple damages. And the damage in this business, if you can do one for what, under a thousand bucks now, you did good? Yeah, it it gets it goes up in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, and 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 then people need to know. I, I'm not talking about your business because I don't know your business. But if it's under my deductible, I'm paying it out of my pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, it, I want to get into the the intricacies of that program for us because <laughs> there, there are some intricacies. Right. But uh, I will say I will say that um, yeah, there there is a. Uh, uh, the, the incentive to not damage obviously is bigger than than the cost of, of causing the damage. But you know, uh, part of of assessing the uh, the root cause of each damage is having you know that experienced judgment. You know, having that eye to understand. You know, what was the real root cause here? Um, you know, if, uh, if if something flew off the back of some other vehicle and smacked into the front of a, of a, of a car not much you can do about that. You know, road debris happens. Um, you know, on the other ho other hand, if yeah, it, brutal. back into a pile of gravel or something, then, you know, that's different. That's a little different story. So I, I think there are, are, there's a lot of shades of gray that you have to be very mindful of when, and you have to be honest and judicial and fair when you, when you make these judgments as to how these things turn out. And, and the other thing is very difficult uh, to kind of wrap your head around is that uh, the disclosability laws vary from state to state to state. And so, you know, when you're dealing with new vehicles, what, what becomes totaled and what doesn't, I mean, it's, it's, you, you need a math degree to figure it out. I mean, and it's very, that's why you have a super claims. Right. Manager. That's right. Yeah. That's why we, and, and, and the team, you know, we, we try and recreate these things when we can, you know, when, you know, let's, but we've, we've done test loads to try and figure out if this was an you know, equipment problem or a clearance problem, or if the freight is not doing something different than it did last year, that happens, you know, that's, that's part of our business. Uh, you know, the sort of unscientific, but so sort of scientific trial and error of, of figuring out what went wrong and recreating it. So, so basically, I mean, and I'm just, Drivers make mistakes. Mm -hmm. a, a good employer, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, a good employer is going to take a couple steps back and try to work out how did this happen? Can we fix it? You're not fired today. Right. And I mean, unless it's gross negligence. D word today. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> no. D word today. D -word today. Actually, actually um, you know, our, our philosophy here is is that, you know, we, we would rather turn a driver that has had problems around. And, and there are a few great success stories that we've had where, where drivers were just kind of on a streak and we said, all right, hold on, you know, this is the break point. This, from this point forward, we're starting from scratch. Etch sketch the whole relationship and let's, let's, let's figure out what we have to do to move forward. And, and that, that's not just about the company's investment. I mean, it is, you know, we did invest a lot of time and effort into, a, you know, getting a driver in behind this, you know, 80,000 pound dinosaur and, and putting them to work and all that. But it's also about developing the skills of, you know, of the person, you know, that person is, if we can turn a driver that has a claims problem to a driver with no claims problem, well, that's a, another driver that I don't have to train. And that driver that we, is turned around is making a better check, earning my bonuses and, you know, taking it home to his family. So, you know, it, it's with a little bit of patience and some discipline, it, it does turn, you know, it does get fixed. And I, I think we're willing to take that extra step and work with the driver, invest in the people uh, so that that way, you know, if there's a problem, let's get to the root causes and, and you know, just start knocking down the almost, reasons. It almost sounds like sports, right? You have, a, you have a moment, you might have a bad streak in sports. 
doesn't mean you're out. That's right. Let's regroup. Yeah, there were a few games. Go team. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Right. Right. So I want to do now. Is it okay to talk to Joe about training? Um, here's what I want to do. Actually, I want to since we're on sports. What I want to do is this, Joe. What does success look like for Midwestern car carriers? Success. Um, well, I mean, aside from world domination, uh, I would say no. I, <laughs> I actually, I mean, I, I mean what's, you know, what's your goal? What are you guys doing? What's we, the- we are we we are we are uh, starting a new account in February with uh, General Motors. Uh, this is the first time we've been. Uh, under contract with uh, General Motors in, I think, 15 or 18 years or some number like that. Uh, my previous employer, I had a very close relationship with Gen- General Motors. So one of my personal goals was to try and rekindle that relationship and get back into, uh, get back, uh, you know, into, uh, into the orbit of, of that great customer. And so that has been a tremendous success for us. Um, I, I think additional goals for Midwestern is, they revolve around growth. And, um, and, you know, along the same theme of what I was just saying, you know, we want to try and build new, re- new contracts, build new traffic lanes. Our network is, is very, you know, it's like a puzzle every day, uh, as one, one of my favorite people likes to say. And what we're, try- what we're trying to do is, is improve the way that that puzzle fits together. When we do that, we give our drivers options. More options means better opportunities to earn, better opportunities to earn more money. More money for them means more, you know, more more opportunity for us to invest in our fleet, build more into our fleet, build our company, and so on and so on and so on. I would like to see Midwestern at 100 drivers, company drivers, uh, in uh, 18 to 24 months. That would be success for me. Uh, I'm afraid to look too much farther than that because the economy is, you know, who knows what happens in, in 18 to 24 months. Uh, let us hope it's right. good. I'm, you know, we're. I, I saw an interesting article just before I got on today. Was on CNN that said um, that uh, General Motors is reporting that their new vehicle sales now have matched what their new vehicle sales were prior to the pandemic, which is a great sign because typically, as General Motors goes, so too do you know a lot of the other manufacturers. I'm I'm sure we will pro- we can probably say that Ford has seen extremely strong demand from its 2021 F Series pickups, which you know. Uh, there's a, a lot of de- pent up demand for as us uh, inventories practically didn't have a shutdown during the Christmas season, which is a little bit odd for our business. So um, I, I think inventories are looking up. I think demand is there. Um, and hopefully, you know, the, the Fed and everybody cooperates the way they're the way they're supposed to. And uh, we'll see the you know, demand continue and the market continue to move up. Well, and that's interesting because, Ty, you just sent me that article earlier today. What did that article say? <laughs> what Joe just said? <laughs> they're selling cars. Whoa. Yeah. In some cases, they're selling cars faster than than they're getting to the to the dealership. In other words, they're selling cars that are in factory line, you know, before they actually, you know, hit hit the inventory. And which which is going to bring me to, you know, to service and how important service becomes to an, a business model. You have to service the customer. If you don't, somebody else is going to. And so, you know, this is, this is kind of a, you know, a fundamental philosophy of our business has, of our company has been that, you know, if you're, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, we try not to bite off more than we can chew. If we say we're going to do something, we do it and find our way to do it. And, um, you know, between our, we've been very fortunate with the partner carriers and sub haulers that we have. We've always had, you know, enough support to be able to, you know, knock down those huge surges when they come. Oh, one more. Sorry, to, I got just yeah, whoa. Sure. Okay, yeah. you uh, back to when we were in the parking lot. Your your square. You where you where you run. Okay. If anybody lives, Jay, do you got that map? Want to pull it up again? Yeah. Because this is this is really cool. Because I just as he was talking, I remember he told me. Uh, if you live anywhere close to here, go ahead and get signed up as a driver. Yeah, yeah. Go to wcci.com and uh, and fill out the application. It's yeah. Uh, so you don't have to you don't have to live in Kansas City, Missouri, to work for Midwestern Car Carriers. No, as a matter of fact, with the General Motors <laughs> contract I mentioned in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Great point. Uh, if anyone's in in the in the volunteer state. Now's a great time to fill out an application if you have if you have previous experience or if you have uh, if you don't and are looking to train. 
Now is a great time to fill out an application with Midwest. Okay, and also you said you, you've you already, uh, I think you're up to nine now. So just curious, how many more you need like right as soon as you can get them yesterday? Well, we, we are, uh, that's a fuzzy question. I, I We're probably going to hire until I run out of trucks and I'm hoping, I'm kind of rolling the dice and gambling that by the time I run out of trucks, I can keep on hiring because we'll take delivery on the new trucks I mentioned before and, you know, just, you know, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Um, you know, that, that's kind of my goal. I think uh, as of right now, I, I think we have another seven to nine uh, positions to fill on top of the nine that I already mentioned. Uh, and uh, then after that, we should be right around the time frame of our of, of delivery on the new equipment and then, you know, move on, move on, move on. Okay, so as, a, as Ty and Jay are sitting here with Joe, happy to have Joe, Randy, good friend, uh, no Ed, and we're, we're so happy you're here. So I want to put it out to our live chat, our audience, if we can, if we can help them uh, in that square, if you live anywhere in there and you're interested in learning how to haul cars, go to the website, get signed up, or my number's in there, give me a call. We'll see if we can help you out. Yep. Um, we offer see. great pay and benefits, referral bonuses for uh, for drivers, 401k with a company match, company <clears> benefits, <throat> you know, all, all the all the all the goodies. So, so if I'm a, if I'm a new, go ahead, Jay. No, you Ty, you're. You, if you. I'm a new guy and I want to come and haul cars, you'll train me, and we can talk about training in a minute. But like Joe said, Joe said the first two questions anybody asks: How much am I going to make, and what am I going to drive? And that third one is usually, and Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, how often will I be home? Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to be home. <laughs> so the answer, the answer to number one is our average driver with experience is, is earning between eighty dollars and $100,000. We usually cross $100,000 with bonuses. Question number two, you'll be in a Volvo or a, or a Peterbilt, one of the two, late model. Um, equipment depends on what your skills are and what you're experienced with. We'll, we'll, we'll find the right fit for you. Um, question number three, most, all, almost all of our drivers find ways to be home uh, every two weeks or, or less. Some drivers that run shorter metro trips out of here in Kansas City are home every night or home every other night. You know, that uh, I, I will, we, guarantee, uh, we guarantee or we, uh, we move the heaven and earth, let's say it that way, to make sure that a driver is home at least every other week. But a smart driver that learns dispatch, learns the patterns, and knows how our freight works can usually do better than that. Wow. That's good information. It really is. And yeah. I wouldn't be afraid to drive a Volvo. Randy's put me in one of his Volvos once just to let me look inside it. And they're amazing trucks. I've never actually owned one, but I got to say, they're, they're inside of those things are just amazing. Let, let me tell you, I, I've been around a lot of car carriers over 23 years. Uh, you know, some of them are were, were newer and some of them were pretty seasoned. Um, <laughs> so, so, some of them started one color and ended brown uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of situation. Um, you know, Randy, is, uh, he, he kind of, uh, that's one of his uh, passions is to spec trucks. And uh, you know, Randy doesn't do anything second class. I can tell you that right now. A lot of our drivers really uh, appreciate the, the company equipment. Yeah, and, and that and that's right. And that, you know, Randy, if <clears throat> if you happen to be in Kansas City and you happen to run over to Midwestern Car Carriers, you, there's a pretty good chance you may happen to run into Randy hanging out in the shop. <laughs> I've yeah, seen him. Every, I've only been there a few times, or seen it on TV, and every time I've seen him around the shop. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't want to say this. So Sean asked something good. He, he asked. He wants to talk about owner operators, if possible. Mm -hmm. I want to mention we were talking about um, everybody's hiring, and you had mentioned to me something, Joe, about um, you know since this is a small world and everybody knows each other, there's a level of respect happening where um you know a, a company that you know and respect you're not going to try to poach their drivers this is something right where everybody right it's because there's a sub hauling community that happens and it's not that it's not that that i wanted to talk about but talk about owner operators and 1099 versus w2 can you touch upon that for us well i mean in in what sense um you really a 10 
there, there are kind of two flavors. You know, you have your sub haulers who lease to us and are not dedicated, you know, who lease on uh, or, or, or sign all of our, our brokerage paperwork. And essentially we broker to them on an ad hoc and as needed basis. That's once once wage structure, one pay structure. Uh, and then under our brokerage side and then uh, 1099 employees who are actual owner operators own the equipment and that, you know, there is a, a, a lease agreement between the two, you know, the company and them. They're dedicated to us, our fleet and our network. You know, we in turn, uh, you know, we, we uh, provide them uh, freight and so on and so forth. Uh, they also fall under things like, you know, group insurance and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, take advantage of you know, certain other aspects of the company, national accounts, things like that. So, um, you know, the, those two, there's a big distinction between those two relationships. Um, we are not adding owner operators until we fill all of our company trucks. I'm not saying that we're not adding owner operators ever, but until our company trucks are full, uh, that probably, probably on the radar. So probably in the spring, if I had to guess is when we really start looking at that. And yeah, I imagine that's common, right? What you yeah, just said, yeah, that, but that's, that's a common setup. It, exactly. I mean, yeah. you're making payments on it. You know, you, you, you want that fleet to be put to work. Um, you know, the other thing about owner operators, uh, we, we are a little different about uh, that, this in our company is that we, we treat our owner operators as though they are company employees. We don't segregate freight boards. We don't play favorites. You don't, if, if you're an owner operator, you have the same chance at, you know, at the, at the gravy lane as you have at the not so gravy lane. And, you know, that's, we don't differentiate that. I mean, you know, if, if you're going to do it the right way, you have to be fair and equitable about it. Um, the, the one other catch I would say is that owner operators are going to be expected to keep their fleet to our standards. And, you know, that's something that gets signed into the lease agreement that when they come on and you know that a lot of that has to do with that Midwestern car carriers placarding and, and, uh, and, and credentials are going to be on the side of the door of that piece of equipment when it rolls into an assembly plant. And so we expect that equipment is going to be kept to the company standards so that that way, you know, you're representing the company in the, you know, to our ex expectations. Um, I don't, most owner operators are not going to have a problem with that. Most owner operators are pretty meticulous about their equipment, but you know, that that's another distinction that is made between leased on versus, you know, a sub hauler who is just, you know, under our brokerage side. <clears throat> Which I'm going to interrupt everybody. This, this, this ties in exactly why I, this is my opinion. Randy, the truck guy who has the oldest truck in the fleet, maybe two years old, brand new, clean. I tell guys this all the time. You want to emulate your customer. You want to look like your customers. So you guys have a lot of new stuff. You're rolling in with a lot of new trucks. And I don't care what anybody says. I've done experiments. You watch a car dealer and you roll in with a nice, shiny, clean truck. Everybody watches. Everybody. Without a doubt. So if you're in the car hauling business, just a little tip, keep your stuff clean. <laughs> and, 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 and wear, and don't, you know, don't be wearing a greasy, you know, what have you that, that when dealers see a clean presentable driver, that driver is substantially more likely to walk away with a clean bill of lading and move on to the next delivery substantially. It's incredible. Okay. Let's We're, talk about that for a minute. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. I, here we go. I love this conversation. When you get out of the truck, <laughs> make sure you got all the tobacco out of your teeth. Make sure your hair is halfway decent or put a hat on. Let's use some basic 101 people skills, right? Let's we hear fly it. hats to all of our drivers, Ty. So, you know, if, you, <laughs> if you're follically <laughs> challenged like some folks, then, uh, you know, we supply hats. <laughs> so what do you, how do you teach your drivers to approach a dealer? I mean, well, I'm sure that's a conversation, right? Yeah, it, you, you know, we, we expect our drivers to, I mean, the driver is the ambassador of the company and the customer. And so when the driver approaches the dealership, we expect them to be courteous. We expect them to be, you know, we, we, if, even if, a, even if the, the, the guy on the other end is having a lousy day and decides to tell you all about his lousy day, you know, you got a job to do. And that job is to deliver a quality product in a timely manner in a safe fashion, you know? So, we, we make that part of our training spiel is to explain how the, you know, how, how we expect our drivers to act in the course of delivery. And that, that is a very fundamental part. Cause again, you're an ambassador to the company. You're representing the company at that point. Rod has one of our company issued. Rod uh, is here. 
years. <laughs> oh, he's joining. He's joining. Oh, he's here. He's here, man. I heard the doorbell. For me too. I love hearing that. Ding, ding. Where is so, he? So, Rod, if you can, you see us and hear us. There he is. Hey, Rod. Okay, so he's not. He's got a microphone. He's got to click that uh, microphone. Um, what am I trying mute. to say? The mute button. Mute, yeah. Unmute. There, is there a mute? Mute, unmute? On the bottom left. Check, check. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey. Ding, ding, ding. All uh, right. Hey, Rod, please say hello. Introduce yourself. You're here. You're live. What do you do? Hi. Hey, uh, I'm Rod Jenkins. I'm the operations manager here. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Joe, this is my first... Uh, live youtube stream so be patient with me all right all <laughs> right hey, celebrity that joe one. is Read him gentle yeah, that's awesome man well you know it's just like real life except you're on video we go live to archive forever okay <laughs> um so which is what uh which is great that's just great jay pressure's on um <laughs> And no, but I've got a, I've got tons of shows where the audio's messed up or I'm sweating like crazy. So there's nothing you could say or do uh, that I haven't already done. And so, uh, but you know, here it's uh, here's the deal. It's Auto Transport Intel. It's the car shipping business channel. We're tr we're talking to carriers, dealers, service providers. That's who watches this show. And the point of you know this show is to talk about the great things that midwestern car carriers you stay busy are you are you working right now oh man if i wasn't uh doing this live i would be building loads and planning for tomorrow all right well, well, what, he's yeah. at his office jay <laughs> yeah no well tell us more i i find that fascinating tell us more well um essentially my job is uh network planning just uh, it's making sure that we're moving the metal efficiently, meeting the customer's expect well, actually exceeding the customer's expectations and moving the metal uh, efficiently, damage free, and uh, minimizing the deadhead. Right, exactly. Minimizing revenue. the deadhead, exactly. And by the way, Ed's getting in position over there. Let me ask you this. Um, on the uh, on minimizing the deadhead and whatnot, I wanted to ask you about TMS and software. Can I ask you about that stuff? Like, like how do you get loads? How do you build? Where do you build loads in your TMS? Right. Right. Uh, we utilize CargoTel for that. Okay. You build loads in CargoTel, and then and then once it's built, how do you <laughs> assign that to your driver? And the driver uses a mobile app. Can I ask you about that? Right. Uh, there is a mobile app and. Uh, our, our dispatch system is is extremely mobile. It, it's web based, so you know I've dispatched loads to drivers sitting at you know I, this is probably not a good thing to say, but sitting at a red light. Yeah, because sure. I can I can dispatch from my phone. You can dispatch from your tablet, um, laptop, all that good stuff. It's it's a wonderful system, and um, so the dispatcher calls the driver up, lets them know, hey, I've got five, six loads available, gives them an option to choose from. Uh, driver selects the loads. Ideally, we, we, we try to have you, you the drivers lined out. You know, if it's a driver that's working local, you know, they'll pick three or four loads at a time. And we email the loads over to the driver. The driver gets the um, gets loads on a handheld device, either their cell phone or their tablet. And everything is done through ePods to deliveries um, and all of that stuff. Right. And so because you are confident in your TMS, because how does it feel when you're not confident in your TMS software? How's that feel? <laughs> well, fortunately, we, CargoTel is the only TMS system that I've ever run. So, and it is it is phenomenal. It is um, many, many companies utilize that, that software. So... Right. So, Rod, Rod, you, Rod, you're saying you're building loads, and then you're sending them to the dispatchers. Is that how that works? Well, um, essentially, right. he is dispatching. Are am I right on that? You're well, sending it to our, drivers. Our, 
No, our dispatch seat, I am filling in right now uh, because our Kansas City, we, we're just bringing in a new uh, dispatcher for Kansas City. Okay. Um, so otherwise, I'd be studying the network, looking at, um, you know, our aging and shuffling the guys around. Okay, we, we've got to meet these expectations over here. We've got deadlines here. And just uh, sorting this whole mess out. And like I said, just figuring out where to put the trucks uh, to make the most revenue and fulfill the customer's expectations. That's the interesting thing is that um, operations and logistics, um, it can be hard to elaborate on all the things you do. Because, Rod, if you if, if I said to you, write down, I want you to, to, to write on <laughs> one, one line per page everything you do. You'd be on pages. And you'd be so behind on everything you really needed to do, you, you'd want to smack me for, for making you list all that stuff. Right. That's why I like to talk about logistics and operations, because it's it's hard to put your arms around all the things you actually do. All right. One of the things that I'm curious to know, and you, you said something about aging, right? So you get a right. so here's a here's a big pile of cars. Here's when we got them. Here's when I'm assuming here's when they need to be delivered. And so the clock's ticking, right? Is that how right. it works? Kinda? Well, well, each uh, OEM has their their, um, their dwell standards. And on average, uh, that's around 48 hours from time of uh, tender uh, to, to shipment. So you got 48 hours to move all those cars. Right. That, Get them uh, you know, okay. We, we have a huge uh, uh, base of sub haulers, in, in addition to our fleet. Right. Well, the thing the thing is, is I like to tie this into back to the dealer. I'm I'm the guy that's always let's go talk to the dealer. Let's see what the dealer's got to say. Here we're talking to an OEM transport company, guys, Midwestern Car Carriers on YouTube, Auto Transport Intel Live on Tuesday night with the co-owner Ed, Joe, and Rob. Right. And right. guess who we're talking about? We're talking about the dealer. <laughs> the dealer even wants his new cars delivered. And just like Joe said, that article that I read, Joe read today, GM's selling them as fast as they can make them. So if it's a new car and it's coming off of a line or off of a train, right? You guys pick up off the railhead, don't you? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So somebody wants that. 48 hours. Okay. Do you know how big of a job that is for a guy like Rod? A guy like Joe, a guy like Ed, that's that's big. I mean, we're not talking like 20, 30 cars, right? We're talking a, a lot of cars. I'm just guessing. I don't need to know the number. But I'm telling you, it, the dealer wants his stuff, right? So I'm assuming if the stuff's not there, somebody's going to be calling Rod and, and saying, where's the stuff? Right, <laughs> right Rod? Well, and yes. I was talking about Rod's system. How does that feel? How does it feel when the system ahead of yours isn't giving you the information you need to satisfy the 48 hours? How does that feel? Oh, that is, um, oh, man, that is really frustrating, <laughs> to say the least. Agonizing. <laughs> yes. Ed, let's, I want to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, Ed. Ed's with Ed? us. Ed, introduce hey, hey, yourself. Hey. Um, I'm Ed Vaughn, one of the uh, owners of Midwestern, and as Rod said, this is my first time being live and streaming, so put up with both of us, so as we go. Well, it's <laughs> really cool. I want, I, I've, I've had the opportunity to Jay talk said, to go. But Jay said, I mean, was talking to Rod, one of the things about this industry is every minute a phone call can change what you're and uh, this business, if you don't like it, uh, you better get out because the one thing about it, the day goes, you, know, you may start at 6 a.m. And at 6 p.m. you can still be going and, and the day's not done. It's just that's the way this business is, has always been that I've been around. You've been in it a while, right? Uh, going on 46 years. Wow. Wow. Okay, and this is cool. I want I want to highlight something about Ed being on here tonight. Did you guys hear Ed? This is the first time Ed's been on YouTube. Ed's co-owner of a big OEM used car fleet transportation company. 
It's 2021. Ed's on the show, and he's talking about let's grow our business. And he's been at 46 years. Is that right? Correct. Okay. That's that's amazing. I mean, I just got goosebumps. I really mm -hmm. did. That That is very progressive. And I, I just want to say thank you. It really means a lot to us, Jay I think, and Todd, in the show. I think in today's world, I, I think with Randy and I, I think Randy and I both, if we could go back uh, and be 40 years old again uh, with what's happening in 2021, we both would do it in a second. Uh, I just see a lot of uh, potential uh, with surrounding ourselves with uh, a Joe and a Rod and uh, some other people we have in our on our staff at the office. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing to see what you can do uh, growth wise with the people. Yeah, and too, Ed, I, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. You, whenever I'm around, I always see you interacting with drivers. I see Randy out in the shop and I always see you interacting with drivers. And I mean, I'm not saying Randy doesn't, but is that kind of more your strong suit? Uh, when Randy and I got into this, uh, one of our mottos was he kept them uh, going uh, maintenance wise. I kept them loaded. And I so that's been that's still true today. Wow, that's amazing. That's and, awesome. and that's a big job. That's a that's a huge job on both sides. I mean, keeping equipment running, anybody that's owner operator even worked for a company. And, you know, the newer equipment is definitely a big, huge plus. Uh, but I'm keep lost. It, is money lost. Yeah. Tom, what was that? I'm lost. Is money lost? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you, every minute you lose, you know, especially with the ELD and all that. I mean, the, the the clock is constantly ticking. You know, so you have you have to really battle to make sure that you're <clears throat> that you're maximizing every minute of every day. And uh, let me touch on another thing, you know, another philosophy that Ed uh, and Randy also have is that, um, you know, what they, they want to know the names of every driver in the building. And, uh, you know, that should tell you a little bit about the character of the company, the culture of the company. It's, uh, it's something that we're real proud of here. Is, you know, I talked before about our people business and, you know, how much emphasis that we put on um making sure that the, the drivers have all the tools you know at their disposal to be successful and you know to the point where we're just not cutthroat and ruthless and we'll just chop people if they uh you know they have a damage and all that you know, another part of it is is that in, in midwestern you're not a number you know you are you you have a name we know who you are we know probably you know know what your family likes to do you know if you tell us you know we're interested in in your life we want to make sure that you have you have home time uh that you spend time with your family and that you you know get to go to the baseball games and do all the all the things that uh, that, that families should do it's a very important part of our culture and uh, you know that i think that um it also is a, a very powerful uh, motivator for drivers to stay here at Midwestern because, you know, you go to a company where, where things are maybe a little bit more mechanical, I'll use that word, uh, as opposed to, you know, at a place where, you know, we really do understand that, you know, sometimes the you got to rush home and uh, get, the, get the kid the tetanus shot and all that kind of stuff, you know, so uh, it, it's a very, very important part of our culture for sure. Well, and this, this may be the segue. I keep wanting to talk about this training idea because it, in my mind, the way you guys train, or at least I think the way you guys train, it really develops what exactly I think you're saying. It's, it's a relationship. So yes. is now a good segue for that? Yeah, we got a, we, we got a thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs Wait, not up. you, buddy. <laughs> All right, then I give thumbs up. Okay. Uh, so how do, how, if I'm a new guy, I want to. I, I like what Ty and Jay and Ed and Rod and Joe are saying, and I, I'd like you guys. And I live close to one of these spots in the square here. I want to come. I've never. I've got a CDL. I've got a clean record, and I've, I can pass a drug test, but I've just never hauled cars. Mm -hmm. What do I do now? So uh, obviously, application. Do all the you know all those tidbits. Uh, go to the website, etc. Reach out to Barb Steele. Um, uh, go through the requirements and then you know from from there uh, we'll schedule you you know 
we want you to give reasonable notice if you're currently employed. If you're not employed, then we're usually poised to, to bring you on quickly. Um, you know, you'll you'll come, uh, you'll you'll speak to uh, either uh, either Barb or Rebecca, who will uh, guide you through the next steps of the orientation process. Uh, orientation at our company typically takes about two days, in which we go through most of the DOT related things. You know, all the, you know, all that. Uh, legal stuff, insurance related stuff, um, you know, et cetera. We, we have a crash course in claims and claims management. We go through, you know, here's how you construct a claim code for all the manufacturers and, uh, and go through that. And then after you, you kind of have, have gotten through, you know, this enormous fire hose worth of, of stuff, we pass you around to the other disciplines in the office. And um, like, as I kind of indicated before, claims is a big one in which uh, Sonia, our, our fabulous and, uh, and, and fantastic uh, claims managers, will go through the finer points of inspection, how to you know, properly document, you know, those kinds of things. And you'll move over to payroll and work with Diane, who will explain how the payroll systems work, how the payroll cutoffs work, and all those kinds of things. You know, you'll slide over to dispatch, where you'll talk to the entire dispatch team. Rod leads the call, and uh, then you'll you know, go through how it is that we run our open dispatch and you know how we how all that works you'll go to kevin in the shop you'll get one of these dinosaurs in, ar around you and then uh start you know start playing with the with the big steel and uh, then after that you know you're going to go over to a mentor who will uh who will, will, will teach you the craft and uh that mentor usually it lasts between uh six and eight weeks uh, for a driver to go through the whole process. Um, the mentor ultimately is the person who makes the call whether or not you're going to be released into the wild or if you need another week or two of training. We pay during the training period, so you're not doing this for free. We're teaching you the craft, so we will, you know, you, you'll be paid a, a wage during that, during that time. And, um, you know, essentially the, the objective is to have a fully formed car hauler after a certain point and, uh, you know, fly away a little birdie, off you go and uh, go make some money. Wow. Okay, so, would, that, yeah, go ahead, Ed. One of the things I would like to add is, is uh, one of the things we try to stress, not every driver, every CDL holder is a car hauler. Uh, sure. This is, it gets in your blood and it's not, and, and I, you know, we stress to say this, if you start this uh, training and after, after a week or two, after a week or two weeks, the mentor is going to come to us and say that they've got it or they don't have it. But if you don't, it's not, it's not a shame for you to come back to us and say, hey, I don't think this is for me. Uh, you know, uh, this is a very specialized business. Uh, the drivers have to do all of the work uh, besides loading, unloading, and, and being our ambassador at the dealership. They're, they're, they're more than just a driver. Yeah. And we try to emphasize that. Uh, so it's, it's very important that a, a trainee understands that he is a trainee he will not come into this industry the first, I would say the first year. Uh, if he thinks he's gonna make $100,000 the first year, he won't be here because he'll be going too fast and damage too many cars and we won't be able to keep him. Or but, hurt himself or herself. Exactly, exactly. Or get injured. They have, to, they have to, I always say this, and I know Joe's heard me say it a hundred times, Rod too. Uh, you're in kindergarten and a lot of the people around you have already graduated. Uh, you have to take it a step at a time. Yeah, that's good. Well, and, and Ed's right. It, it, there, this, there, you, you really got to be <clears throat> to to love it, to embrace it, to want to do it. Even when you're sick or you're not feeling like doing it, you still do it. It it really is a business, and it Ed's perfect. <clears throat> it's, it's it's specialized. It's highly skilled, and not for everyone so that's true now back to what joe was saying <clears throat> this is this is in my opinion demonstrates community and relationship so if you're a new guy 
and you you like man i live in this square i i like these guys i like this show i i want to learn to haul cars i've got a cdl what you're seeing is this relationship 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 really rela- here meet rod here meet barb here meet uh, a couple of the other people joe said now we're going to go in the shop. We're going to meet Kevin. I've met Kevin. Kevin's a big guy, and you don't want to break stuff because Kevin will probably break you, right? Kevin doesn't. Yeah, Kevin's very meticulous. <laughs> he's what? Meticulous. He's very meticulous, and he's there for a reason, by the way. And, the, and it's to take care of that truck that you see right behind Joe. So the next part, and this is where I get real excited because it, I've done this, and it, and it really works. You take it. So Joe calls it a mentor. This is the guy who's been at Midwestern for five, probably more years. And he knows the program. He knows the people. He knows the system. We're going to put you in the truck and you're going to follow the mentor guy. And he's going to help you load. He's going to show you how to load. And he, at the end of the day, like Joe said, he's going to be the guy that gives you the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Is, is that right, Joe? Yep. And, and actually, a lot of times the relationship between the person who trained and the trainee, just it, it goes on, you know, the, the, Three years later, they'll get a phone call. Say, man, how the hell do you fit this load on this truck? And it gets into a, well, you, yeah. you might try this, and you know that kind of that sort of kind of thing. And you know these relationships they last forever. I, I say, I'll say it again, people business. I, I'm going to point at Rod, who I think uh, uh, you know knows more about the goings on of the various families in Midwestern than than most of, of the drivers' spouses. Uh, we have uh, we have drivers who. Uh, of every creed and color, we have uh, male drivers, female drivers. Uh, you know, this this is an ex- we we have a very diverse mix, uh, and we're proud of that too. You know, this is uh, this is an organization that really just takes a lot of pride in, in putting people to work, and uh, and giving them the tools and getting the heck out of their way. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shift just a little bit. I'm gonna talk about the new guy again because he wants to look at least he thinks he wants to be a car hauler. So he runs, meets everybody at the office, then he goes with the mentor. Mentor gives him the thumbs up. So one of the things that we talk about, I've talked about for years, and I could be wrong, uh, here's nine cars, load them on the nine car trailer. Is there an absolute right way, Joe? No. I mean, there are principles, I would say, um, you know, but uh, car carriers are a lot like people. Um, you know, they all have, people all have noses and eyes and ears and, you know, fingers and toes and things. But some people are particular, some people are not. Some people are, you know, car carriers are the same way. Some trucks like to be loaded one way versus another. Some drivers uh, prefer uh, certain ways of utilizing the equipment. There are various tools within the equipment that you can use to get your load down or, or, ki- or keep your load, load uh, you know, proper to scale. Some things that there are, without a doubt, I mean, you're not going to defeat physics. You know, there are absolutes to that extent. But um, as an, to, to answer your question, if a dry, you know, is, is the right way to load, drive secure, drive secure, drive secure, drive secure, or is the right way to load, drive, 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 secure, 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 secure? It, it depends on the personality. You know, every right. every driver has their own flow, their own rhythm. Right. And, and you know, you, you said these guys, they make this relationship and they'll call each other that nobody knows about. And they're, hey, how, do you, how would you load this? How would you load that? And, and the cool part, too, I want to throw this in there. You guys pretty much haul the same stuff most of the time. Right? No. No, no, okay. no, okay. no. We have a very diverse mix of traffics. Um, we we haul uh, virtually every FCA product that there is in uh, in, in Kansas City and uh, Toledo. We haul uh, Hyundai Kia product out of uh, both in Kansas City in Shreveport in Montgomery, Alabama, and in West Point, Georgia. Uh, we haul uh, Fords from time to time. Right now, we're assisting on some traffic down at. Uh, down at the old uh, Gabauer Air Force Base in uh, here in Kansas City, and we also haul uh, F-150s and transit vans out of the plant here. Um, not that long ago, we were hauling General Motors pickups uh, out of, uh, not, uh, not Wentzville, but basically out of Wentzville. Spring Hill is going to be a mixture of uh, SUV and other traffics that will point south and will tie into our network. Um, and we've hauled Fords out of Dearborn, MAP before. I mean, 
Uh, so the, the answer is no. I mean, we, we, we have had to put that puzzle together and learn all of the different, uh, you know, ways to ma- deal with manufacturers a lot, a lot right. in the last years. That's, that's really interesting information, by the way, because I've always thought if you're an OEM guy, you're always going to haul the same stuff, and you, mm-hmm. that's not true, which is I like mm-hmm. that because mm-hmm. I, I personally like throw a load at me that I got to use my brain. Right. I mean, and call me crazy, but I, I just like to see and, what this can and can't do. Go ahead. And me, I love to, Joe, I love to hear you talk about the different plants and the clients and locations. I find that to be a really interesting um, aspect of the information. You know, we talk about equipment and we talk about, you know, dispatch or software. But what you're talking about on the client side Again, locations and contracts. For example, the GM contract. Mm-hmm. Um, you were you were talking about that. T- tell me, can you tell me a little bit more about? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So here. The, the the General Motors contract uh, is, origin point is in Spring Hill, Tennessee. That it begins. Uh, it's effective February. Uh, we may be starting earlier with, you know, bits and pieces and things like that. That's you know going to be up to some other, up to the customer and things like that. But. Generally, uh, it, you know, starts in February, and what what this does is, for us is this is traffic that is right in the heart, in the center of our, our midwestern box, that points the driver directly at another reload. You know, um, one of our, our business development uh, uh, vice president, right. life, we're we're using this to connect the dots. You know, from here to here, it fills empty miles for a driver, so that that way they're not just rattling burning fuel because drivers don't get paid. You know, anywhere in our business, drivers do not get paid hauling sailboat fuel. They get paid hauling steel. So, you know, our objective in dispatch, Rod's problem every single day is figure out how much steel I'm going to put on these trucks. And, um, you know, this allows another option for him to be able to put steel on these trucks, cut deadhead, and put, put money in a driver's pocket. So, again, we're using this as an entry point, drivers that are empty, you know, in a particular area that's, you know, that's conducive to, to Spring Hill. And they, instead of rattling down to Montgomery or West Point, now there's something, an intermediate that they can grab in between so that those miles go from being empty to paid. And I'm sure to <laughs> a strategic contracts business development executive, this is elementary and obvious. But to another vertical within the industry that they're thinking, well, that's, that's actually really interesting. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. to look for contracts that that will decrease your deadhead etc um and so i mean i appreciate you sharing that because we all know this is the kind of information you don't hear talked about very much well there, there's so no perfect you. contract jay there's you know the, the manufacturers have a need and they'll hand you this is the book of business and it goes to these areas here well Maybe this side of that area is, you know, is, is perfect for me, but this side of that area is not so perfect for me. Well, from a business development standpoint, now what you're trying to do is find ways to make this part of the business, you know, work. Again, you try and find a way to connect that dot so that that way, you know, you end up with this overlap. And then what, what seems to happen a lot in our business is that, you know, Fixing this creates another overlap, and then you got to fix this problem, and that creates another overlap, and then you got to fix that problem. And you know, <laughs> we all go home. We all go home going, "Oh, my work is never done." It's, it's executive <laughs> level dispatching live. It's literally. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We're hitting it's it all amazing. for you. <laughs> wow, it is amazing. Um, in fact, uh, there's a one of the topics we didn't talk much about is brokering. Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, Rod, Rod is the expert on brokers, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll defer to him other than to say that we're a full service brokerage. Um, you know, the, the, the best way to, to start the process, if you're not already uh, signed on with Midwestern, uh, is to go through our website and reach out to us that way, and then we'll get you a brokerage packet and uh, tell you what the requirements are to become a sub hauler. With that, I'll, I'll leave it to Rod and what the, how the process runs. Just a brief right. overview, Rod, would be great. Okay, well, our the sub haulers that we utilize, like I said, we, we have a large base of sub haulers, and uh, the equipment that they operate ranges from uh, four car, five car, seven car, nine car outfits. Um, we have 
brokers that are dedicated to us in the sense that they run, they're dedicated to running our short haul traffic out of um, out of our Kansas City area. Um, we have dedicated brokers running out of Centerville. We've got dedicated brokers running out of uh, Chicago Heights. Anywhere that we have short haul traffic that is um, 50 miles or 70 miles or less, we, we usually uh, utilize dedicated brokers in those areas. And we also have dedicated brokers to run our, uh, our long haul stuff. We've got uh, brokers that run uh, from the south to north and from north to south uh, for us as well. See, and I, the reason, thank you for that. The reason I wanted to talk about it because the word broker tends to get a negative connotation oftentimes in discussion yeah. circles, but it's just another form of, of how the whole thing works. Again, we talk about dozens of automakers, hundreds of fleets, thousands of drivers, and millions of cars. So it can't all just be all drivers, can't just be all carriers. There are different needs for different types of jobs in all different situations. And I just, I, I like to, you know, to be reminded of that. You talked about diversity. Yeah, it takes all kinds of different people and different types of lines of work to make this all happen. And, and, it, it, and it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's, it's also about a kind of a win-win situation. So like, for example, uh, the economics of running a wedge or a three car or a five car are going to be something different than the economics of an 80 foot car carrier stinger. Not, not to say one's better or worse, but the, you know, the, the costs are different. So there are, in our case, we may not be able to build efficient loads for the 80 foot stinger that will maximize its use. Three or four car carrier, those loads can be extremely efficient because that's what their cost structure is set up to, to handle. And so from an aging standpoint, they assist us in, in you know, meeting our customer's expectation and knocking down that dwell. And from an economy standpoint, both parties prosper as a result of this. And again, I'm going to go back to this thing I keep saying about relationships, relationships, relationships. You know, we have people that we've been doing business with for years now because they've learned that Midwestern is a reliable carrier that we, you know, that we are we don't miss our payouts. You know, we don't we don't cheat anybody on uh, on on, uh, on on what we pay when we when we pay out our revenues. You know. We're an honest carrier for honest people. And you know, that, that builds these partnerships and that's why we have these dedicated and extremely long-term relationships with some of these people. They, they, they make us look good, we try and keep them fed. It's a beautiful synergy. And so uh, maybe a great segue, I'll say final topic could be, you know, um, where we are, what's going on in the world. We've got worker absence in some places and safety concerns anything on that topic that you want to touch upon oh who goes first <laughs> yeah um well I, I i'll say this i think that uh you know we we live in a post-covid world uh now you know just like once upon a time we live we we were it was september 12 2001 and you know things radically change it's it's sort of the same kind of thing you know um things will not go back to the way they were in, in February of, the, of 2020. They just won't, you know, there, there are going to be t uh, takeaways. There are going to be practices that, that come as a result of this. You, you talked before about the hybridization of business, um, you know, those kinds of things. And uh, that, I think you're going to see a lot more of that. You know, what does that do to the new car market? I, I don't know. I don't, uh, my crystal ball can't, is fuzzy. Um, but I, th right. I think that, um, you know, one thing that 2020 should have taught, uh, the, the, certainly the United States, if not the world, is that logistics really matters. It matters more than you thought it did. And it doesn't matter if it is, you know, delivering peanuts on the back of a, of a you know, on the back of a, of a truck, a box truck, or delivering cars on the back of an 80-foot Peterbilt. Uh, logistics really, really, really matters. Um, and I, I would say that takeaway uh, that I see is actually a lot more optimistic that I think that we're going to find ways to really, um, you know, amp up our game 
I think that, you know, there, there are some very fresh minds out there that are really paying attention to uh, the, the trends of our business. And I think that, you know, the smart players, the, the people who are, really are paying attention to the industry and paying attention to the customers are really going to have a fabulous opportunity to profit. Um, I think that we are going to see more electric vehicles enter the market. What does that mean? Vehicles are heavier. Heavier vehicles mean that this rig has to be something lighter so that that way we can be able to build to maximum capacity and meet our customers' expectations. Or else, the other, uh, the other end of the extreme is that you're going to price yourself out of business. Uh, I think that those types of things are going to be you know, of serious concern in 2021 and 2022. That's my hot, t hot take. Awesome. Awesome contribution. That was really good, Joe. That was really awesome. good. Man. Man. It was, it was not rehearsed. I know. Wow. It was amazing. Those are the best. <laughs> Unrehearsed. That was good. Ed, what are your thoughts to add? Can do you have anything to add to that in that, you you know, you were talking about perspective if you were 40 and this and that. What, what do you see happening? Well, I was I was going back to, to back on the brokering side. I go back to when manufacturers uh, expected a, you had a carrier for Fords, you had a carrier for GMs, you had a, a carrier for Chrysler. Uh, if the carrier for Ford was in trouble, they had to have help like a broker, but back then you did not have brokers. You, you, they came and they called a company and you trip leased. We had to put that company's placard over our placard to haul a Ford load. Uh, with deregulation, that changed a lot of stuff. There's always each manufacturer, whether it be a, uh, a railhead or a plant site, the carrier gets overwhelmed at different times and us being able to establish a carrier base to broker to is the same thing that you had in the past. It's just, it's changed a lot. It's made it a lot easier. And I think that that's the thing that I've seen uh, over time with, with going paperless, all the other stuff. I mean, we, we have a, a place that we used to have so much paperwork uh, upstairs here that we've almost eliminated most of it because it's all on the computer, in the cloud, et cetera. So we don't have to carry all that uh, stuff. So with if we continue the way it's gone the last several couple of years, uh, who knows where we'll be in the next couple. But uh, you still got to get product from A to B. So- right. You know, at the, the end of the day, as, as people say, right, it's still it's still logistics, trip planning, a lot of the fundamentals and good people that you can count on to make it happen. And, and <clears throat> talk uh, truckless drivers, I mean, trucks without drivers and stuff in the car industry. Uh, I think we're going to still have drivers because. Once you get from A to B, A, you got it, somebody's got to load them. And when you get to B, somebody's got to unload them. Uh, agreed, which is why it would be interesting to see what happens in that arena. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to predict that. And it's kind of irrelevant because the fundamentals are still there today. Well, I want to, I want to, I don't know where we're at on time, but I, I feel we're like at I 10 o'clock. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to close her up here. I'm yes. Gonna, I'm just going to say, Ed. Joe, Rod, I want you to know that it really does mean a lot because it's showing, I mean, Jay and I have these talks every now and then with the door closed and we're, and we're talking about what is going on in this industry, what's happening. We're seeing this, we're having them, we're black book. I mean, oh, whoa, repos, what are we going to do? OEM, okay. And the reason I'm really excited here is because this, what you're seeing right now, guys, this is progress, right? You hear Jay and you hear Ty and we, and we talk about, you know, the car haulers are still doing paper, still in the Stone Age. No, it's changing. When you got a guy like Ed, who's been in it for 46 years, and he's bringing in a hot shot like Joe and Rod, they, they're not done, guys. 
this this party's not over. I mean, this this is really encouraging. So that's that's my perspective, and that's why I think it means so much, especially for me and Jay both, to have you guys here, is because it's it's really is it's demonstrating that things are changing, and that there's this opportunity to change for good. And, and I love hearing Joe talk. I mean, it really is. It's refreshing. It's yeah. the guy's got goals. The guy's looking for success. He's needing some drivers. I want. Everybody in the live chat or everybody that watches this later, if you know somebody, spread the word, right? We, let's try to help them out. I mean, it's a community. So anyway, thank you very much, guys. I really and do. And if you're it. a veteran, make sure you tell us that on your application. Very, yeah. very you know, the core value of our, comp of our company is supporting our veterans. Yeah. So anyway, thank you very much, Rod. Yeah. Good job, man. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for having me. This was an awesome show, and we really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I just want to second what Ty said. We talk to so many people, and we look at so many things happening in the industry that I'm still surprised at how much resistance we run across in different pockets. Um, but what we know is that folks in the other verticals, when they see what we're doing here, they love it so much. It is so exciting. And so you Midwestern car carriers joined the party tonight on Auto Transport Intel, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ed. Tell Randy hi. Miss yeah. you. We'll do. All right. Talk Take to care, you later. All right. Good night, everybody. I'm ending the meeting. Ooh. It's official. And we are out. And there it is. Um uh, Midwestern Car Carriers, that is a wrap. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight on Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday Nights Live. This was episode 171, Midwestern Car Carriers. And it's great to see, I saw a lot, uh, I saw a lot uh, happening in the views tonight. And clearly there's a lot of interest in uh, the auto transport fleet vertical, right? Carriers make up probably the majority of viewers on this channel, um, but more and more we do have folks from dealers and auctions and technology services, insurance, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, yeah, we wanna keep that train rolling. So if you wanna be a part of Auto Transport Intel, you know, I've got a, uh, I've got a campaign that's rolling, and, uh, and we'll be rolling it out. We'll be contacting more soon, but we're going back around. Listen, if you've been on the show before, and it's been a while, if we haven't talked in a while, you haven't been on in a while, you've got something to talk about, we are making the round again. And don't hesitate, I'm already booking April. So send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Let's reconnect. There is something happening. The other verticals want to hear more. There's no need to just stay in the club with the doors closed and the windows blacked out and nobody can hear what we say. We're not doing that. We're throwing open the windows. The door is open. We are talking auto transport with anybody in the automotive industry that wants to talk about it. Digital auctions, home delivery, all the crazy stuff. We're talking about it here on Auto Transport Intel. I want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. I want to thank Superflow Systems. Thank you, Jack Cooper. And thank you, Midwestern Car Carriers. Uh, we spent several uh, times talking to prepare for the show. I think it shows you guys did a great job. Barbara in the live chat, thank you so much for participating. And do, uh, Barbara just shared another uh, link, and I just want to send it again. Please do go to mwcci.com. Sorry, Barbara, there was a YouTube error, and I don't know what's going on there, but I just shared it again. Um, but thank you, Joe Bercari, VP and GM at Midwestern. Thank you, Ed Vaughn, co-owner. And thank you, Rod Jenkins, operations manager. Randy couldn't make it tonight because he just doesn't feel well, so hopefully he can make the next one because he's got a lot of great stuff to talk about and I think he can tell you how many gaskets are in the engine etc and we want to dive into that stuff so thank you guys so much um, be sure to tune in tomorrow for DOT compliance if you have a DOT question this show is at uh, 8 o'clock central all my other shows Wednesday Thursday Friday start at noon central and they're shorter so there's a benefit too. DOT compliance tomorrow 
Thursday dispatching live, Friday cars on the move, and then we rinse and repeat four times a week all year long. It's going to be crazy. So thank you so much for tuning in to Auto Transport Intel, and thank you in the live chat, guys, everybody. Paul, uh, JR Pulley 63, Trinity Vaughn, Barbara Steele, Joe Burkari, Joel Hawk, thank you all so much. And I can't wait to talk to you, your company, your product or service. Reach out to me. Let's do something. Let's bring you on the show. We can put you on a panel. We can do a feature show. We can have you on one of the other shows. And we are doing the Kung Fu of Auto Transport. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon. Peace out.